Hello, welcome to this video. Thank you so much for tuning in, sharing in this now moment with myself and with one another. If you haven't seen these videos before, welcome. Welcome back if you have. My intention is unity and oneness. Uh, apologies about the background noise. I've got earbuds in. Um, it's kind of windy where I'm at and uh, I wanted to do a quick video in the car. So um, let's play with the guides. And as we sit within this time frame, as we sit within this frame of time, if you will, it gives us a certain amount of variation. It gives us the ability to frame out the variety of ways we would like to play, if you will, with these energies that are incoming. Um, one of the things I wanted to kind of just ask about was what, where are we at? Like what phase are we at? in this particular part of our development, because I have a lot of questions coming in about what's next. And um, the guides keep calling everything a whole new world, right? A whole new reality that we're, we're part of. And so as we tune into this energy, as we tune into the co-efficiency, the coefficient energy that we are all collaborating within this field of collective consciousness. We begin to recognize that consciousness is a field. It is a field in which we express ourselves through, with, and within. We are all part of this field, if you will. And we are being invited to call to our awareness more of this field. We are beginning to look beyond the perception that we've carried with us from our past frameworks, or from our past time frames, from the past frames that we have worked ourselves into in this particular field of frequency within the entirety of the field. So I'm being shown the same picture I was shown um, in a previous video that I did actually, I think the last video that I did that had um, kind of this the cube with like all these other cubes. It was like a fractal of cubes, more cubes and more cubes. And we were playing with this visualization because the hypercube is an excellent way for us to view or the tesseract uh, certain versions of this particular frame this particular parcel, if you will, and part of realities. And I'm hearing par cell. So it's a play of words. And I'm warming up, you guys. So usually I would just do this while I was walking. But I was like, I'm just going to record this because it's so windy. And we each hold within us part of this ability to tap into the unity that we are all part of. We are all being called to up level how far we reach, how far can we reach from within to grasp that which is truly within us that we see as part of us yet I'm being shown it's out. We think it's outside of us, but it is outside of us from one perspective. I'm thinking about galaxies and um, different parts of bigger collectives, bigger collectives of consciousness. And we feel as if there is a gap between these areas and these fields and, and our own fields. But in reality, there is no gap. All is created. All is uh, created through these gaps, if you will. So therefore, even though from one perspective, the gap is us versus us or them, us now or the future them, or the past and us now, there is no difference in the two, we would venture to say. For what you are perceiving or creating now through your own perception, lens of perception, perspectives of perception, is being seen through your eyes collectively. Um, I'm seeing a peacock. And so all of you are collaborating in creating all of you. And I'm just, I'm hearing all the view, like we're being able to see things in a more, I'm hearing creative membrane and I'm hearing robust. 
And the more we can allow ourselves to call forward our own robustness, if you will, our own ability to um, expand in these views, in these creative, um, I'm hearing the creative embrace, it allows us to step out of the race and move into a more fluid momentum with time. For the fluidity and momentum that we have in time is being sustained. And I'm getting, again, the message of self-sustaining. And the cell ability to contain oneself within this fluid dynamic interpretation of reality is coming to a change. We are changing. And as we change, so too does the ability to kinetically move through this landscape of inner domains and inner um, domains within the domains. We're going a bit quantum as we speak on this because it is time to really focus for some on the quantum. Um, oh, and I'm hearing, I'm seeing quantum tunneling. The old versus the new. For many are afraid of the new. Many are not aware that they are already wrapped up within what they perceive as new. It has already been created. For time does not work in the same way that we interpret it. It is something that we are co-creating in real time. Therefore, our own abilities and mechanisms within which we learn to interpret time is changing and shifting. As we change and shift the way we interpret time, the way in which we interact with that, with time or with the uh, medium that time gives us the perception of working with or we have the perception of working with through the modality that is time it changes as well and if we change our relationship with that we change our relationship with time and what is a relationship rather uh, more than an interaction between two i'm hearing um candidates and this is a play of words like i'm being called to actually play with the word candidate but we'll come back to that we are being called to reunify with aspects of ourselves that are future versions or transcriptions of ourselves these future versions of ourselves that are here now within our own dna transcription that we can read in this now moment, because the transcription is embedded within the DNA artwork, if you will. So it's a play on words with artwork. It's like medium, art, like how great thou art. It's all embedded in us now. So as we allow ourselves to open up and read the transcriptions that are inscribed on our DNA, we begin to play with the future now and we begin to resonate um, sorry I'm getting a phone call I don't know if that's messing with my I'll have to pa I don't know how to pause this ah Okay, we begin to read the writing on the wall. And um, I always get reference to that song um, with, um, is it Simon and Garfunkel, right? Or the sounds of silence, like words of the prophets are written on the subway walks or and I'm also seeing like the pyramids. I'm seeing a reference to um, the pyramids. I'm seeing a reference to, I'm just seeing a reference to a bunch right now. You guys, the energies are pretty strong right now. So I'm trying to kind of collaborate with them a little bit 
more fluidly and it's challenging in my current tired <laughs> mental state. And so if we can look a little deeper and we can allow ourselves to look inside of the codes that we are not only providing in this video, but what each and every person or human carries within them, we begin to open to the possibilities and potentials that this communion, that this communication can be accessed at any given moment. And what communication are we speaking of? We are speaking of the transcription that is written on and inside your own, um, I'm just seeing body, but I'm also seeing like vehicle, right? Vehicle for travel, vehicle for interpretation, the medium that we are encapsulated within. And so as we allow ourselves to read between the lines, we begin to transcribe and infer what the information is that is stored within the human template for what has happened in the future, play on words, what has happened, like you could say what has happened in the past or what has happened in the future. It's like they're showing me this infinity loop like nothing is, you know, it's back, forward, front, back, it's all connected. We begin to loop into a different, I'm seeing crochet, a crochet loop, and weave with more information that than we perceive. Or we begin to perceive the information that is already woven within the human template. <clears throat> and diagram, if you will, of what has been drawn out, not only from previous ancestral lines, such as the Egyptian times, such as, and I'm, and as I say Egyptian times, I'm hearing Egyptian timetables, and I'm seeing Sumerian texts, and then I'm also seeing like, like I'm seeing the future, um, future texts that are maybe imprinted on For whatever reason, I'm hearing things that we think are from the past. So what I'm being shown is like time travelers, like people came from the future, came back to the past, gave us these templates and structures. And so what we're actually reading is from the future, but we think it's from the past, <laughs> if that makes sense. For those of you who are really confused by time, I could see this being very confusing, but they're trying to show me that's exactly what's happened. And so therefore, your own ability to decode this can come from within because you are part of that heritage. Each and every one of you carries information inside of your own template that can allow you to un, um, decode and unfold from this source connection. Now, why would we bring this up right now? For it seems as if it's unimportant to be able to transcribe information from the future, especially if we are co-creating the future now. But we are meaning to tie this together. And I'm seeing the golden means. I'm seeing infinity. I'm seeing like codes and spirals. We want to tie this together so that you understand that you are creating reality now for the future. And that which has already been created, even though you are describing it now, that may seem as if it is from the past, because you are reading it and changing how you interact with it, you are changing the future that has already happened. And in essence, you are also changing the past in your own way. This is confusing. And we might hesitate to say this or share this information, but each and every person will hold their own truth or information or their own truths and assimilate it in their own way. And each of you is here to play in this field of assimilation, play in words, and I'm hearing simulation. And we remind you that even though some say this is a simulation, you are still creating energetically through communication, 
with all mediums that are connected through whatever is connected through the matter. So even though this may seem as if it is a template or a structure that is um, being um, patterned or controlled from an avatar, because this is the story that is being projected through a perspective of realizations from other humans, it doesn't matter because you still are feeling and interacting with this as if it is real because the body or the um, template of source frequency is part of all things. So therefore, all things are real from one perspective. So we invite you to sit back and enjoy the ride a bit more. We invite you to sit back and allow yourself to use your imagination. Allow yourself to imagine what could be. Allow yourself to imagine what could possibly be real if we wanted it to be so. If we were able to see the future now, if we were able to close our eyes and perceive that it was right here now, what would that feel like? What would it smell like? What would it be like and be like that in this now moment? Meaning, pull and comp uh, compile, if you will, plan words. I'm seeing that has to do with the resonance and fabric. That energy from your being, from your essence now. And if you close your eyes and view future as a scary place to be, that fear is what is compiling from inside of you. That is what piles up from within you and changes the future to more of what you are uh, of the essence of, for you are the essence of that. You are the um, quilt, if you will, that is being quilted. You are the quilt maker. You are part of this interwoven design that, okay, I'm being shown that artist that I, I can't remember, but he's got like his hand and out of his hand is coming the paper and out of his papers is coming the, the drawing and it's all merged into one fabric. And they're basically like, the guides are like, that's what all of this is. So use your imagination and don't, because what you're imagining, what you're afraid of is creating more of that, of course. And while this is a collaboration and while this is a collective of chords and chords of consciousness and elements of spice and fear and love and bliss and light and dark. For those of you who are seeking to clear out these old templates that are no longer a part of the temple that you wish to, um, I'm hearing plan words, I'm hearing worship from, and I'm hearing worship, and I'm hearing the ship that was, like we don't want necessarily to create that anymore. It isn't already created if you are changing it now. Therefore, you can create the future now and change that. I'm being shown what a, um, Oh, I was still recording. <laughs> I'll have to cut that. Ah, so here we go. We are sharing this in a very goofy way, you might say, because it is time to get goofy. And I'm being shown Disney. Like, look at the imagination. Whatever your views are around that whole story is irrelevant. That man took from real stories, used his imagination and maybe things that we agree with or don't agree with, and turned nothing into something um, and told everybody 
stories. And so there are thousands, millions of people who are, their childhood is based around these stories, you know, going to Disneyland, these characters. And it, it's as a kid, they don't know the difference between that being real or not real. So when do we lose that imagination along the way? And I know that there is this story of, you know, I'm hearing the cross that we bear, all of these things, the more we focus on them and bring them into our reality. And then we change stories around those stories, but that's part of what we're here to do. So what the guides are basically saying is, let's let loose a little bit. Let's not be so rigid. Let's start really imagining what we really, really want, not what we've been told the future looks like. Now, granted, They're saying that we came from the future to come back and tell us what the future looks like, but it's not set in stone. So even if we, let's say, imagine the future is having, you know, these wild spaceships everywhere, maybe that's not what we want to see. Maybe we want it to be more organic. So let's play with that. And we each have our own individual idea that makes up part of this quilt that makes up part of this fabric and tapestry of reality. And this isn't necessarily something, you know, we we are being called to be practical also. But for this particular message, the guides are like, start playing with this fabric, this material, this medium that we are part of in this material existence. So we can create materials or have things materialize in front of our eyes that we are realizing in real time, that we are co-creating together and saying, this is what I want to see. And doing it from our hearts, doing it from a place of co-creative imagination and playfulness is so important right now because it just, I just keep hearing it's time. And it has something to do with the time that we're in right now. So what I'm going to end on this note, what they're encouraging us to do is essentially stop and play for a little bit, even if it's only for a week, even if it's only for an hour, even if it's only for 20 minutes, maybe we're like that all the time, but there's something about how we're accessing time that is really helpful right now in this creative process. So use it to our advantage. That's the message in love and light guys. Namaste. Namaste.